For the longest time, it's been my dream to make a video game in VR. Up to this point, I've made a lot of games in 2D, like platformers and top-down movement games. Recently, I've taught myself Blender enough that I can do most of the basics, and I want to see if I can build my dream VR game in just a few days with the Wonderland engine. Stick around if you want to see my dream world come to life in VR. I was honestly shocked by how much I was able to do, and this will also give you some guidance if you've ever wanted to make a VR game. VR is such a cool medium, and it's no secret that it's becoming increasingly prevalent in the world around us. People are making the metaverse and talking about the capabilities of VR and AR. I don't know about you, but I always thought that building a world in VR is something that was way too complicated for me to take on. The reason I'm using the Wonderland engine is because it makes VR game development super easy for artists. I mean, it makes development easier for everyone, but as an artist myself, I found these things particularly helpful. The engine takes care of most of the hard things about VR, like optimization, quick iterations, and a lot of other small things that just make the experience great. Also, the fact that the Wonderland engine uses WebXR makes it a lot easier to publish content online without having to go through a third-party app store. With a website, you don't need anyone's permission to publish content. So the first place my VR world started was in my head. I've always loved floating islands and I wanted to make a really cool floating island world in VR to explore. I drew some really simple concept art, mainly with a focus on color. I used Palatin to get the color scheme, which is a really great website for getting color palettes. My idea was to make some funky colored floating islands with weird mushrooms and castles everywhere and a giant space whale. I'm aiming for a bit of a surreal experience, which is cool because you can make whatever world you want in VR. The laws of nature no longer apply to me. The first day of development, I got to work testing a couple things in the Wonderland engine just to see what I could do. I basically started learning the engine just a week or so ago, using the tutorials posted on the Wonderland engine YouTube channel, and it was super easy to pick up. I was mostly trying to figure out how to just make the whale's animation play and move the whale at the same time. It was a pretty simple solution, I just used the test animation of a monkey moving up and down, and I made the mesh a child of another object, and then I enabled retargeting, and it works great. The rest of the day of development, I spent pretty much just modeling the assets that I would be using in Blender. I decided to go for a pretty simple low poly style, which helped me to make all the assets really fast. But Wonderland does a lot of optimization for you, so it's definitely possible to make a world with higher quality assets. I started by modeling the island, which is pretty simple, but it gets the job done. Then I made the mushrooms that would populate the scene using curves and some other fancy little blender tricks that I picked up. I also drew some two-dimensional images for grass patterns that I used to diversify the face of the island a little bit. I think that they also add a little bit of 2D charm. After that, I modeled some little rocks to add more of the red color into the scene. I also spent some of the first day messing with the lighting options in the Wonderland engine to figure out how to achieve the feel I was going for. I ended up changing most of that on the final day, but it was still a good thing to learn early on. That was pretty much everything I did on the first day. It was a lot of modeling to get ready for for building the scene in the Wonderland engine the next couple of days. The second day I started by modeling the whale creature that I came up with. I simplified the design a little bit and I rigged it up. I'm still really new to rigging and animating in Blender, but I made a pretty simple animation with the wings flapping and the tail and head uh, un undulating, uh, undulating, undulating. And it didn't turn out half bad in my humble opinion. The last thing I needed to start building the scene was the castle and the bridge. I made these really simple just for the sake of time, but they work pretty well for what I need them for. Now, I know so far I've used Blender a lot. Even though I'm pretty new to Blender and the Wonderland engine, exporting my models into the engine is super easy and I figured it out right away. I'm sure it'd be the same way with any other modeling software as well. The thing I love about importing models from anywhere though is that the Wonderland engine will automatically optimize all of your textures. That way everything runs smoothly in VR without you having to do any extra work. It won't mess up your meshes by compressing them though, but there is a super easy way to do that manually for even better performance. And I'm sure there's a bunch of under the hood things that are happening as well to make sure everything runs smoothly that I don't even understand, so I definitely appreciate that. Like I said, I started learning the Wonderland engine a few weeks ago and I've picked it up really quickly. The interface is really similar to Unreal Engine or Unity, so most game devs won't have any trouble at all. I personally don't even have much experience developing in 3D, but I was still able to learn it very quickly. Basically, you have your library with all your assets and scripts and such at the bottom, which I use to organize some of my models like grass and rocks into folders. Then you have the scene with all the objects that are in it listed on the left. Each object can have components like mesh, collision, or even custom scripts, which are on the right. For me, this was the fun part. I like building levels, so adding all of my meshes into the Wonderland engine and starting to put the world together was really fun to see. I think it's also important to mention that I used a template to get the player VR camera and movement up and running really quickly. They have templates for VR and AR, and I liked the way that the teleport worked in the VR template, so I went with that. That way I can move around the scene instead of being stuck in one place. And that's pretty much everything that I got done on day two. 
Day three is when everything really came together. I looked into adding a skybox to the scene so that it wasn't so pink. I asked the Discord server for help and someone referenced me to a short tutorial that's up on the Wonderland YouTube channel as well. Just goes to show how many learning resources there already are for the Wonderland engine. And the Discord is super helpful for anyone who's learning the engine as well. Basically what I learned is that you have to render an equirectangular image and then project that to the inside of a sphere and export that to the Wonderland engine. To start, I found a great pack of royalty-free skybox HDRIs that I loved. I had to try a bunch of them and it was pretty tough to pick one, but I eventually decided to go with this one. I rendered my equirectangular skybox. By the way, I don't know what that word means, I just think it makes me sound really smart. I tossed it into Fire Alpaca, which is the free drawing software that I use. I basically just added a pink layer on top of it and turned the opacity down to give it a pink tint. Then I made a sphere in Blender and added the image as the texture. Then I reversed the normals, which is basically just turning the faces on the sphere inside out so that the image is projected on the inside. After all that, I tossed it into the Wonderland engine and... wow. It adds so much. I adjusted a lot of the lighting to make the skybox feel more realistic, and I am loving the results. This is where I started to see my idea really come to life, which is so cool. I decided to finally toss on the VR headset and preview the game. I totally haven't even mentioned the best part about the Wonderland engine. You can preview and test the game really fast using an Oculus Quest, which is usually pretty hard to do. Basically, you download the Oculus Developer Hub on your computer, and then you set up port forwarding so that you can preview the game inside your Quest using the browser. The reason this is so helpful is shown pretty well by what happened next. I loaded up the game and the whale zoomed past me. Uh, dude's got places to be. When I coded the whale movement, I set up a variable for speed that I could change in the editor whenever I wanted. So I slowed it down and refreshed the page. Uh, now he is very slow. Changed it again and it's much better. The ability to quickly iterate and preview things is super important for VR development and Wonderland Engine just makes it so easy. Before I play the game, I decided to add some sound. I found some royalty-free whale sounds and relaxing ambience and I threw it into the engine. It was super easy to set up, which I actually didn't expect it to be. All I had to do was add an audio source component to the whale and then a listener component to the player. Then just for a quality of life thing, I made it so that when the whale travels out of range, he'll teleport back to his original position so that he keeps coming back. It was some simple programming and it actually worked on the first try, which has never happened before with programming, so that was nice. This was a nice change because if you keep exploring, the whale will swim by periodically without you having to refresh the page or anything. Now that everything is in the game and working, it's time to play. This was one of the most fun games I've made in a while. There's nothing quite like seeing your own models or ideas right in front of you or moving around you. VR development isn't something that's impossible for the average person to do. If I figured it out so fast with almost no 3D game development experience, anyone can. There's tons of resources out there to get started learning the Wonderland Engine, but I think the most helpful one for me was the tutorial series up on the Wonderland Engine YouTube channel. Make sure to check that out if you want to make your dream game in VR. I also made another video about developing more of a technical game in JavaScript with the Wonderland Engine if that's something that interests you. And I have a YouTube channel where I've posted a lot of devlogs and videos about the other games that I've worked on called J Hunter. Make sure to check that out for more of the stuff that I've made. There's no better time to start learning VR game development than now. So go make some cool stuff.